Hello everyone, welcome to SAP Technomaniac. In my last video, we saw what is OData. OData is a RESTful API. To understand this, first we went through that, what is actually API is. Then we saw, based on how API works, it divided into the four parts, and one of the part was REST API. Since the own data is the RESTful API, our REST API, so we discussed REST API in the detail, how one API can become REST API. If one API follow these all the rules like uniform interface, statelessness, layered system, casability, and code on demand, which is optional, if one API follow these all the rules, then it will become REST API. Odata also follow these all the rules. Now in this video, what we will do, we will try to understand one REST API is part of the request, what should send from the client and is part of the response server, what should send, what details should send back to the client. Those all the details we will see. Not only that, we will see some terminology, terminologies like uh, what is uh, web APIs, what is remote APIs, and some people call OData is a uh, web SQL also. Those kind of things also we will see in this video. Let's get started. Understand the things in the simpler way, we can assume OData like a web SQL because we already know the SQL. In day to day, in our ABAP programming, what we will do to get the data from the database, we will we write the select statement. We will get the data from the table, some of the fields, or we will join the table based on some condition. The same thing, if you want to get the data over the web from the different database, which is, your, which is not your company database, you can write the queries in your URL using the OData. There are some of the examples I have given. Suppose I want to get one of the entity called airports. I will explain these URLs in detail, what is entity and all. We can write select light statement. I want to get some of the data from that particular system based on some where condition. That also I can pass from the based on some filter condition. From is a part from the client is part of the URI or URL, and then I can get the data from the different system if I have the access to that data. So in simpler way can we can understand that O data is a web SQL. We are writing the SQL in form of the URL and we are getting the data from the different server. This is the one of the things I want to tell if you want to understand in the easier way, O data. There are some of other things are there, uh, remote API and web API. So API we know it helps us to software to communicate with each other by following some of the uh, protocols or some of the rules. But remote API designed to interact through the communication network, any communication network. By remote API means, we means that the resource being manipulated by the API are somewhere outside our computer. It can be anywhere, but it's outside our computer. That means it can be in our local network also. If, we, we, if in our office, the local network is created and we can manipulate from our desktop from other, de uh, other desktop data as well. Sometimes we do using the access of the drive. If we have that uh, network access, we can, uh, we can, through the local network, we can modify other drive data as well, which is available in other system. That is remote API, we can say. But the web API is little bit different from the remote API because web API communicate over the internet instead of uh, communicating uh, through the local network or some other way. It will always communicate through World Wide Web, www. It through always, it always communicate through internet. So web API also part of the remote API only, but the communication network will be different. Communication method will be different. Communication method will be always internet. That is the basic difference between the web API in remote API. Web API also part of the remote API only. Or sometime we will call web API as a web services also because it is giving some services over the web. Now, next thing, we will see what does the RESTful API client request contain? 
is part of the whenever uh, the client requests the data from the server, it should send some information what I need. So as I told you, the information they will send is a part of URI. URI is the combination of URL and URN. URL contain the location where the uniform resource locator, where the actually your resource is there and URM, what is the name of your resource. Based on that, the URL example, you can see, suppose I want to access my profile data. This is the one of the URL. Uh, this is one of the OData service, uh, open OData service, uh, Northwind. Uh, we can access the data from the one of the uh, using this OData service as well. And so basically we need one URL to get the data, to identify where actually our data reside. And second thing, what actually wa we want from uh, we want from that URL? We want to get the data from there. We want to create data there or we want to delete data there, that we will do using the HTTP method. So basically RESTful APIs always work on HTTP, HTTP, HTTP protocol. So again, this is one protocol, the rule, if you, have, uh, if you are communicating through web, word by web, you have to follow this HTTP. So inside this, we have some, some of the functional method based on what you are doing, you have to define, if you are getting the data, your method will be get, if you are creating the data in the server, then your method will be post. If you are deleting the data in your server, that will be delete. Or if you are changing one of the lines in the server, that will be put. Or inside the one line, if you want to change some field, then you will sometimes some uh, we use patch as well. So these are the method we use uh, whenever we use HTTP protocol. So it, it will give the information to the server what you actually want to do with the data. And apart from HTTP method, we will send some, along with this method, we will send some information also. Suppose I want to create the, uh, I have one client, as a client I want to create one employee in my server, in which is reside somewhere on the internet. I have access to that server. So I have to send that uh, particular employee information which I want to create. So that information I will put in HTTP header also is a payload and what kind of information it is, in what format it is, that detail also we will put. So HTTP header is the combination of name and value pair where we will send the extra information to the server so server can understand what actually we, are, we want to do and what kind of data we are sending. So we will send the extra information. These all things we will see in the browser as well. So is part of the client what he needs to send when, whenever we are working with RESTful API or OData, we, we have to send one URL, Uniform Resource Locator. We have to send what needs to be done with the data which we are identifying using this uh, Uniform Resource Locator, uh, representation of the data, what you want to do with that data. And uh, third thing, the other extra information which we will send using the HTTP, HTTP header. That also we will see. Is part of response, from the server, what we will get is the one is the response code we will get. Uh, there are the already defined response code is there in the over the internet. Uh, if it is a response code, it start with the one star start either 101, 100, 102. That means it is giving some information. Suppose uh, we go to the 102, that means it is processing. And if it is whatever we want to we want to do, suppose I want to get the data, we got the data successfully, the response I will get success as a 200. Okay means 200 you got the successfully data. Or if you want to create the resource in your server, then you will get uh, once you send your data and as part of response, you will get the 201. The, the data is created whatever you have sent. That these all the responses we will see when we create the real time uh, OData services in our SAP system. And just, just to having the knowledge, we should know what all are the status, giving the what all are the information. If status start with the three, it means it is redire redirecting our uh, URL to somewhere else. And four means there is some error, which is client side error. Our client side error, we got some error, we are not able to get, send the data to the server or we want to, we are not able to send the information to the server. And if the server side error, there are some error at the server side so resource is not available or not implemented, then we will get the server side error in the five star, five access, 500, 501. Suppose the not implemented means 501 we will get. 
these are the some of the information if you want to see all the code regarding that this is link is there i will put uh, one or you can simply go to the uh, google and search simply or uh, status status code http status code then you will get a lot of links you can see the detail there and masses body apart from the uh, return in as a response we will get the masses body which will which will be having the representation of the resources we will be not having obviously actual resources actual resources are reside in the server we will be having the representation of our resources with with them we can work and it should be enough information there uh, so we can easily able to work that is the rest tool api if we are not able to work with them that response to what is the use of that in as per my last video that should be some in, enough information whatever the information we are getting from the server it should be enough so we can work with that data and apart from that response header also will be having in the response header there are again there are some extra detail will be there uh, uh, means what kind of uh, data you got and how much data you got and what is the format your, of your data this kind of information will be there we will see in the browser uh, we will jump into the browser and see uh, we will run one of the U url and we will see what what is actually because it's very important whenever we are working with the over data we should understand this all the things to understand the http pro protocol and http request and response what we will do we came to the browser we will open one of the website let me open the google.com itself and th this is very important you have to know we have to go to the developer tool either you can click control shift i or you can come here and more tools and developer tools this will be very important for us when we are developing the our data service and we have to go to the network tab as of now we are in the network tab let me refresh the data again we can see the load of data is coming from the server so what it is happening here is a client the browser here acting as a client and it is sending this particular url to the server based on this url if you click on this particular service uh, close this one then you can see the other information so you send the request url this one based on the this url and uh, the remote address means remote address code identified where this particular url resources are there and from that from that server we got the data and basically this is the html page we got the page and it got displayed here so you can see here uh, we are using the http method as a get method because we want to get the data from the server and some of the more important thing the status code since we got the the page is loaded successfully so status load is successful 200 in this case uh, we are getting the remote address you can see 443 means uh, this is https request whenever you see the 443 at the end of the server request this is the port number the port number where we are getting the data so for https request this is more secure secure than http so http is not secured and uh, now whenever you access the http side uh, that the port will be different let me see one some open some http site http uh, okay http websites if you click uh, open any of the http website try to open first thing you will get the warning since it is not secured and if you go control shift i you open the developer tool and you go to the network tab and refresh the data again and if i try to open this particular sorry i try to click on this one then again you can see the port number is 80 here the port number was the 443 because that as because of this if you are sending the getting the data through https it is more secured because data will be encrypted encrypted and then it will be sent but in this is the not secured thing so that is the reason we got uh, the port is also different where all the http request will be handled through port 80 and https uh, will be handled through 443 this is one of the information i read somewhere and uh, again you can see some of different uh, okay code 304 okay as, as you know already what is the three star uh, will do or take okay code it will redirect somewhere else so you can see we go to some other website it is redirecting from here to somewhere some other website that is the reason we code the status code as a 300 the, that is the work of the status code and apart from this uh, general information we get this uh, request header and request res response as part of request header as i told you we send the lot of information in this case browser also send the lot of information it will send that 
from where you are requesting the particular resource. Uh, in, in this case, I'm uh, requesting from the Chrome web browser, what is the version of the browser, what, what language I am using, those all the information, it will be there and what kind of information I'm requesting for and where I'm requesting for, what is the authority and what method I'm using, those all the information is part of the header I will send request header I will send this is the not this is the name value pair in form of the name and the value what is the name and what is the value that is lot of detail uh, browser will send apart from what we want to send apart from that there is something request response header also where we'll get the detail uh, detail from the server which will help us to process the data whatever we got so in this case uh, I think we we will get like information like what is the content length and what what is the encoding what is the format of data what is the content type this all that html type and this all the information we will get based on this information we will process further so let me open one of the odd data service here uh, so uh, i we have some odd data service freely available north wind one of the odd data so one of the freely available north wind odd data service So uh, we got the response in form of the XML. I will explain this entire file. As of now, I want to explain only the HTTP header part. So let me open this particular, click on that particular, not double click, single click is fine. I always double click. So that is the op reason it is opening in different uh, tab. So what I did, so in, if you open this northwind.svc, in this case, you can see the same detail. What is your URL, what response you get, what is the source code, what is the IP, again it is secure than 443, as part of request header, what you have requested, those all the information, what is the host and those all the information it will be there and as part of response, what is the content length you got, what kind of content you got, in this case I got the XML format, so it is saying XML, I can see the response here, response body here, in this case this is the response, I can the preview also, whatever the response I got in the developer tool, I can do the preview as well. These are the, we should understand, uh, you should have to spend some time on this network tab or you, you have to spend some time on this uh, browser tool, developer tool. So we will be using these tools frequently in upcoming video, whenever we run our own data service directly here to get the, check the response, what kind of response we are getting, what kind of, the, how much time it is taking to get this data, those kind of information also we will check here in the, browser that's a very important in this video we have discussed about the request and response which is sent by client and server in my next video we will talk about odata along with the sap till now whatever we have discussed that is not specific to sap whoever company is using the odata it is applicable for all the companies in next video on words we will talk specific to SAP and we will start with the Odata architecture then we will go from there. Before going to that video please like this video, share this videos with others as well so they can also learn. With that thank you and happy learning.